Hello, welcome to the second part of this exercise in Python lists. Uh, this is a code along, so get your get your browser out uh, if you're doing uh, online, or get your IDE out. Um, and we're going to look this time at doing a couple of exercises with integer values in lists. So last time we looked at strings, so now I'm going to look at integer values. And integer value lists work the same way as strings. The only difference being you don't have the quotation marks that you would with the strings. So I'm going to type in a list of random numbers for the purpose of this exercise. It doesn't really matter uh, what the numbers are um, once they're just a couple of random numbers. Now, so as per the string list, we can just print the list by typing in my list like so. And um, a first a first example uh, is, is, is interesting it would be to return the max value, the highest value in the list. Um, so an interesting exercise here is to write this list up on the white on, on the whiteboard here and or if you're looking at it here think of uh, can you pick out the highest number from this list have a look so you'll see almost straight away that it's 87 um, and how how did you do that how did you pick the highest number from the list um, when I ask students this they usually tell me that they just know and they just look at it and they can see um, but let's delve a bit deeper and think about it. Uh, you know, we're developing computational thinking. Our brain is going through a process to, to find the highest item in the list. And the thing is, this process has been programmed into us when we were very young, learning about maths um, from, from junior infants. And because of that, it's automatic to us and we don't think about it. But let's have a think about the process or describing a method to someone who was new to maths and maybe just understood how to compare numbers how to find the highest item from a list. And this is what we have to do in terms of compu computers and computational thinking, because we have to set aside the memory that we're going to use uh, and, and, and what we're going to store in order to achieve this task. So what we, what, what, um, what we might think about doing as a strategy for this, we could write out a flowchart or a pseudocode if you want to pause the video now and see if you can put together a, a flowchart or a pseudocode algorithm for doing this. But as it's a very simple task, it's pretty straightforward. So what we would do is we would take the first item of the list. And because it's the first and only item we've seen, we assume that's the highest value in the list. And all we do then is we just step through the list and we just do a comparison the whole way down. And we record this as the highest number in the list. And then we say, compare the known highest number to this item. If this item is higher, it becomes our new highest number. And if not, we just continue down through the list. So uh, this is like 32. So we, that's our highest. Is 45 higher? Yes, it is. So we remember that as our highest item. Is 31 higher? No. Is 56 higher? Yes. Becomes our new highest item. 5 is lower. So that doesn't become our new highest item. 34 likewise. 53 likewise 87 is higher so that becomes our new highest item and 43 is lower so we're left with knowing that 87 is the highest uh, our maximum value in the list so let's have a go coding this so what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to create a variable called max value and we're going to set it to the first item in the list which you remember from the last time is index value zero so what we're going to do then is we're going to go through the list and we're going to say for number in my list if number is greater than the known max value then we're going to say left out the colon then we're going to say max value gets assigned the value of the number that was more than it and then at the end, we're going to print the max value. And let's see if this works for us. So I should expect it to print 87, which it does. Um, now let's look at the second uh, list iteration technique for doing this. So if we wanted to use the for i in range uh, 0 to the length of the list, Um, what we do is instead of saying number, we're going to change it to the index reference for my list, just my list i in this case, and then max value should be assigned the value of my list position i. And 
that should work the same way it should be 87 now uh, like all these simple uh, programs there's a built-in function which can do this for us uh, so if I was to say print and I go max my list so I didn't have to write the function at all obviously enough it's a common task I can compare them to see if they're the same so a nice way of testing these uh, functions that students might write write that already exist um, is to have a little um, a little piece of code at the end uh, so we're going to print oops we'll print the output of this which is max value and what I'm doing here is I'm going to compare the built-in functions max value whoops and what have I done wrong here a common mistake if I'm comparing it I need double equals and not a single equals and um, so this will print the built-in functions max value against my function I've just written the max value from that list and if they're the same it should say true and what I would say then to the students you know maybe do a bit of testing by putting in uh, a couple more max values here and see if it remains that the self-written um, the self-written uh, function will return the same um, one so what we can do now is maybe try a follow-on from this and maybe get a mean average uh, write a function for uh, returning the mean average and then compare it against the built-in python one okay so this is quite similar again um, but this time we might uh, put down so to get the mean average how do we do it so let's kind of flow chart it again so you can pause if you want um, but it's just uh, create a variable running total or total uh, we set it to zero initially and as we go through the list we are going to um, we are going to say that the running total whoops caps lock on should uh, be incremented by each value as we go through so because uh, I'm using the I style of it list iteration here it has to be my list uh, I and then what we're going to do at the end make sure that we wait till the end and we're going to say uh, we're going to say we can say mean average equals uh, the running total divided by the length of my list and then we're going to print mean average and then we're going to print the mean average on the function we've just written compared to the mean of my list once again let's see all going well 